Hello all. Let us learn about the role of clinical microbiologist in diagnostic stewardship. There has been crisis in infectious diseases because of the widespread antimicrobial drug resistance, increased number of patients who are immunosuppressed, emergence of new pathogens, re-emergence of older pathogens, decreased new drug development, and dysbiosis due to antimicrobial therapy. It is an estimate by 2050, 10 million deaths will be attributed to antimicrobial resistance. Every year, costing world economy about $100 trillion. So, antimicrobial resistance is like a silent killer pandemic. How do we define antibiotic stewardship? Antibiotic stewardship is the effort to measure antibiotic prescribing, improve antibiotic prescribing, so that antibiotics are only prescribed and used when needed. Minimize the misdiagnosis or delayed diagnosis leading to underuse or overuse of antibiotics, that is diagnostic stewardship. Ensure that the right drug, dose and duration are selected when an antibiotic is needed. It's about patient safety and delivering high quality healthcare. What are the goals of antimicrobial stewardship? First, improve patient outcome, optimize the selection, duration, dose, reduce the adverse drug events, reduce morbidity and mortality, prevent or slow the emergence of resistance, reduce the length of stay, and reduce the healthcare expenditure. So what are the four movements of antibiotic decision making? The four movements include make the diagnosis, second, empirical therapy and appropriate cultures, third, narrow or stop the therapy, and fourth, duration of therapy. So the first movement says, what well, does my patient have an infection that requires antibiotics? Secondly, have an ordered appropriate culture before starting antibiotics? What empirical therapy should I initiate? Third, a, a day or more has passed. Can I stop the antibiotics? Can I narrow the therapy or change from IV to oral? Then fourth, what duration of antibiotic therapy is needed for my patient diagnosis? So these are the four movements of antibiotic decision making. Linking diagnosis to worship, that is the right test for the right patient at the right time. Is the test appropriate for the clinical setting? Will the clinical care of the patient will be affected by the test result? Will the result be available in time to, to optimally affect care? Rapid diagnostic tests offer opportunities to inform antimicrobial use with diagnostic information quickly. So this is a diagnostic stewardship is also linked to antimicrobial stewardship in the fight against antimicrobial resistance. What are the basic principles? If antimicrobial stewardship is to be successful, then appropriate specimen must be collected and it must be embraced by the medical and nursing staff. First, it should have an indication. Appropriate specimen collection is critical. A swab specimen should be discouraged. A specimen of poor quality should be rejected. Culture should be created before studying antimicrobials whenever possible and it should be labeled properly. Now, what is diagnostic stewardship? It's a coordinated guidance and intervention to improve appropriate use of microbial diagnostics to guide therapeutic decisions. Diagnostic stewardship should promote appropriate timely diagnostic testing, including specimen collection, storage, transport, and pathogen identification, and accurate timely reporting of results to guide a patient treatment. The appropriate use of lab testing to guide patient management in order to optimize clinical outcomes and limit the spread of antimicrobial resistance. Diagnostic stewardship should not be confused with the cost effective use of lab results, which, although part of diagnostic stewardship, is more limited in scope. What is the role of clinical microbiologists in implementation of diagnostic stewardship? His role includes ways to, to make the clinician understand the test result, to make him understand modified antimicrobials based on test results to make him act promptly on the test results. And both diagnostic and antimicrobial stewardship are required to optimize the use of resources and outcomes. While diagnostic stewardship is, uh, is test-centric, where uh, we ensure that right test for the right patient at the right time, antimicrobial stewardship is right. It is pharmacy-centric or antibiotic-centric, wherein we ensure right interpretation, right antimicrobial, and right time. So there's a close relationship between diagnostic stewardship and antimicrobial stewardship and it's vicious and there's a cycle between the patients, the laboratory and the clinicians. What is the traditional method of patient diagnosis? The clinical history is, is the, to see whether the patient is infected, whether it's bacterial viral, then understand the antibiogram to see whether it's a bacterial virus infection, gram staining and treatment decisions. Obtaining cultures prior to starting antimicrobials is important. Develop a process to ensure cultures are properly and consistently ordered. Nurses needs to ensure that collection of specimens from appropriate source. Develop process and ensure cultures are prop properly and promptly transported and processed and labeled correctly. Culture results guide patient care decisions. For example, in wounds, it is recommended against the superficial swab, likely colonizing organism. Preferred samples are purse and tissue. Surgical wounds, 
uh, recommended contacting microbiology prior to specimen collection. Consider wound care, consult if available for cleansing or development prior to sample. Regarding blood culture, se separate vein pages using aseptic technique are preferred. Drawing blood for cultures from incubators should be avoided unless the catheter is thought to be the source of bacteria. Label specimen and collection site and time. Regarding urine, urination of the patient's symptoms is critical before ordering urine culture. Screening for asymptomatic bacteria uh, is not recommended except in pregnancy and before an invasive procedure. The urine analysis should be performed before a urine culture is ordered. Urine with more than 10 uh, WPCs per pill with symptoms should have a urine culture if patient has symptoms. Regarding stool for clostridium difficile, the clinically significant diarrhea is defined as three or more stool samples within 24 hours. Only watery or unformed loose stools should be submitted. If patient has been on laxatives in the last 48 hours, then cancel the order and allow at least 48 hours to pass without laxatives. Testing to urinate for cure is not recommended. PCR does not distinguish between colonization or infection. Therefore, indications for PCR testing are very important. Refer to the article of IDSA guidelines that is in uh, uh, a guide to utilization of microbiology laboratory for diagnosis of infectious diseases. 2018 updated by the IDSA and American Institute for Microbiology. The, 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 observation, the highlights of this article are, is that the specimens of poor quality should be rejected. Physicians should not demand that the lab report everything that grows. Specimen from sites such as low respiratory tract, nasal sinuses, superficial wounds require care in collection. The lab requires a specimen, not a swab. The specimen should be collected prior to administration of antibiotics. Sensitive testing should be done only on clinically significant isolates, not on all microorganisms. Specimen must be labeled accurately and completely so that the interpretation of the results will be reliable. Let us learn about point of care testing such as NAC, that is nucleic. We, uh, we have seen there are various POC tests such as rapid antigen testing, group based streptococcus, influenza, enzyme immune assay, where the sensitivity and specificity is, uh, uh, is uh, good. For, for the NAC testing, the swabs are used to collect the specimen, which are placed in the liquid medium. Liquid is prepared into the reaction containers and the barcode scanned and reaction container is then placed into the instrument. Within less than 20 minutes, we, we get the results uh, where, where there is a multi, 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 par, multiple parameters uh, results can be uh, obtained. And as, depending on the positivity, we get results as per influenza or respiratory sensitive or streptococcus or COVID-19. Let's learn about procalcitonin. Procalcitonin is normal process in this C cells of the thyroid. It is converted to calcitonin. The normal levels are about less than 0 0.05 nanogram per ml. Bacterial infection stimulates the procalcitonin production. Endotoxins causes procalcitonin to be produced in many tissues of the body. Concentration of more than 0.25 nanogram per ml may indicate a bacterial infection. Levels more than 2 nanogram per ml can indicate high risk of severe sepsis or septic shock. Procalcitonin is increased in bacterial infection. It is more specific for bacterial infection than sedimentation rate or CRP. It is inhibited by the tumor necrosis factor gamma in response to variety viral infections. Levels change rapidly in response to bacterial infection. Pre-PCT helps acid in both starting and discontinuation of empirical antibiotics. It is helpful in sepsis, tumor strip, and hospital acquired and ventilator associated pneumonia. Rapid response to the treatment of bacterial infections uh, uh, can be guided by procalcitonin. There is a sensitivity of 89% and specificity of 94%. Uh, the negative predictive value of 89 to 94%. It helps you to the bacterial burden. It is not affected by steroids. There are poor calcium in kinetic finite kinetics. It rises 3 to 6 hours after a battery in patient peaks of course in 20 to 24 hours. Half of his life is about 24 hours. Takes 24 hours of the appropriate antibiotic therapy to see reduction in the pro calcitonin. Pro calcitonin production and serum concentration will decrease by about 50% per day with appropriate antibiotic therapy. If therapy is inadequate, pro calcium levels will remain high. So regarding the levels, if the level is less than 0.1 nanogram per ml, no antibiotic should be required as the battery in patient is very unlikely. If the procalcitonin level is more than 0.5, bacterial infection is very likely and microbi antimicrobials will. There are issues of false negatives to low pH procalcitonin and infection can occur in the early course of infection, localized infections like pharyngitis, sinusitis, subacute endocarditis, osteomatitis, and mycoplasma pneumonia. False positives also can occur because of non bacterial causes of elevated, uh, uh, elevated PCT, such as severe physiological stress, malignancies, medications like gra granulocytes, transfusion, interleukin 2, and others. Non bacterial pathogens like malaria and canary infection can cause uh, elevated PCT and renal failure too. Let's see about the rapid diagnosis test. We call it when the test gives the results within four, within, four, within four hours of the collections. 
those tests are rapid diagnostic tests. Implement, uh, we can refer to the article called as uh, the implementing an antimicrobial stewardship program guidelines by the IDSA and Society for Healthcare Epidemiology of Wherein we uh, it is it is the question is should the stewardship program advocate for use of rapid testing for respiratory pathogens to reduce the use of inappropriate antibiotics. And it was concluded that we suggest the use of rapid viral testing for respiratory pathogens to reduce the use of appropriate inappropriate antibiotics. Again, there was a question to this, which was answered to this article that should stewardship program advocate for rapid diagnosis testing on blood specimens to optimize the antibody therapy and improve clinical outcomes. And it was concluded that yes, it is suggested that rapid diagnosis testing in addition to conventional culture and rapid reporting on blood specimen is in, recommended if combined with active stewardship support and interpretation. There is always a race against return around time. Recent explosion of the FDA approved and ra rapid diagnosis test methodology for infectious diseases has entered uh, this race. Role of rapid diagnosis testing and biomarkers is recognized as a key recommendation for antimicrobial stewardship by IDSA. Emerging measures include a large variety of technologies. Complexity, price, speed, and ability to identify single or multiple pathogens vary greatly. Major focus is on in disease states and pathogens are associated with increased morbidity, and mortality, and increased health cost. Let's see some of the rapid diagnostic tests. This includes biomarkers of infection and inflammation such as WBC, ESR, CRP, lactate, PCT, that is procalcitonin, gram stain, and molecular testing too. What is the role of diagnostic and antimicrobial stewardship? As we seen earlier, the diagnostic is a diagnostic center, that is the test center, in the right test for the right patient at the right time. But antimicrobial stewardship is the right interpretation of the testings for the, for the right antimicrobial at the right time. So it is a cycle between the patient, the healthcare provider, the lab, and the laboratory. Even we see the traditional methods of the testing, it takes about nearly by the by the by the day three or day four we get the, we get the results and for the targeted antimicrobial therapy. But if you uh, um, uh, employ uh, rapid molecular identification methods or rapid diagnosis tests, by the day one or day two we get we get the, we get the opportunity to target antimicrobial therapy. So the molecular rapid diagnosis tests are culture dependent, uh, the, the, such as Malditov. That is matter consistent laser disruption of energy time of flight mass spectrometry. So the multiple of MS uh, is an example of mo uh, the molecular RDT, which is cultural dependent. It is based on the principle of proteomic identification. And then some of the tests are rapid uh, based on rapid biochemicals. Some are uh, based on rapid identification pathogens from directly from the blood culture such as microarray or fish. Some are, have some have uh, rapid phenotypic AST. Some are nucleic acid amplification tests based on detection of genes like. Make A for MRSA, one A, one B for VRE, and K, 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 carbon carbon protein clips, clips, and various others. The advantage of this model, the rapid diagnosis test, uh, uh, such as Malditoff and others, they, are, they provide results within an hour. However, the issue, the, the, the limitation is that the cost of the machine is too high. The cost of the though the cost of resistance is too less as compared as compared to other conventional methods. And it currently identifies 93% of the organisms and it has it's very helpful to, uh, in, in antimicrobial stewardship. In Rapid identification of positive blood cultures uh, has a very high accuracy rate by biofire diagnostics and uh, nanosphere diagnostics. It's about 90% accuracy rate. 80% of organisms isolated were detected by film array during in a study of sepsis. The time to de-escalate was improved when it was linked to the antimicrobial stewardship. Then Malditoff versus multi multiplex PCR, the automated mass spectrophotometry, microbial identification for identifying bacteria and microbial bacteria isolated directly from the clinical samples in clinical microbial laboratories in Malditoff had a good uh, uh, relation, uh, positive uh, relations in, as compared to multiplex PCR. Then we have the various rapid phenotypic testings for, uh, directly from the uh, colonies. From then we have Vitek for the rapid, uh, for the automated identification and sensitivity. Which is good uh, sensitivity and specifically for example, it is coca and gram negative. Uh, rapid diagnostic tests which are culture independent, such as nucleic acid amplification tests and syndromic panels for bloodstream infections, urinary tract and respiratory tract infection. Are the other. We have PCR panels for respiratory, GI panels, blood culture, meningitis, and lower respiratory panels. To summarize, newer diagnostic tests should be averted to whether they are value added, communication between antimicrobial stewardship and, rap and clinical treatment needs to be. As technology advances, there should be a close relationship between microbials and the clinicians.